Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. This particular video will be the second in a series of videos about creating budgeted purchase orders. In our first video, we talked about how you can have budgeted purchase orders, change order purchase orders, or variance purchase orders, and we are currently doing a series about creating budgeted uh, purchase orders, which can be created from various places in the program. In our first video, I'm going to click Budgets and Estimates. In our first video, we talked about um, creating a purchase order, a budgeted purchase order, from the Job Budget Worksheet, and we clicked here to open the Budget Worksheet, or from the ECC Worksheet. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about creating a purchase order from items, from a list of items that you can set up. Items for the detail of materials or labor can be set up that are attached to cost codes in CHS. They can be set up as generic items on the cost codes master and brought into a job budget as needed. I'll click on our job budget. Or items from other jobs can be brought in to be items for a PO or they can be set up on the fly when creating job budgets or purchase orders. There is um, other help under cost codes or looking at our help main menu uh, fully about creating items. In this video, we won't really create items. Um, I'm going to look for our cost code um, for mirrors and glass. It's 5900 type cost code down here. Um, 5930 is our cost code, mirrors, and glass, and I'm clicking on that record so that I can see all of the detail over here. And what I'm going to click on is items, bid requests, selections, POs. And we're going to see what we have here. Behind the budget, we did receive a bid from Fashion Glass for our items, I mean the items that we had requested them to bid on, and we created a list of items based and then we um, had issued a bid request, but we also used the list of items that they had on their bid request, and we set up items. And like I said, um, please watch videos about items. You can get more items. These have been set up as generic items um, that you could load if you didn't happen to have any here. But we have some here because we were doing a bid request on our budget, and we, we check mark to include these items on our budget worksheet. But notice this column for new PO and so far it says no check marks up here in the new purchase order section but notice if I check mark this one this amount will change to this 3225 and if I keep check marking it will keep changing but I can use the select all and it's asking me if it's okay to select them all to be on a brand new purchase order. So after clicking those, you can see that the amount here is $1,252.87. I'll show you in a minute um, how our bid is for that amount. But I can now click Create Purchase Order. Like I said, I could have added more items or not checkmarked all of these, but I'm going to go ahead and create a purchase order from these items. Now I need to select the vendor that I'm going to be giving the purchase order to and I will click continue to create purchase order. Now you'll see that we have a purchase order for the amount of the, all of those items and since it was built from items we would need to click the items button to get back to those items that are on the purchase order but we'll do that in a minute. First of all um, we'll talk about this a little more in another video but I'm going to attach our bid from Fashion Glass to this purchase order. So I am clicked on some things. I'm going to go through my computer here real quick to find my bid. Um, down here at the bottom I know which folder I have it in. And we'll, we'll upload that bid and the thing will open for me to tag it. And I'm just going to say CHS gives it a random thing, but you can make it more clear. And you can see how 
everything has really been filled in by CHS for you, but I'm going to select bid from vendor and like I said we'll have another video about doing this upload. And I'm going to save that. I'm going to go ahead and open my bid so we can take a look at it for a minute. And you can see here um, those various items and you can see that with tax the amount is 1,252.87, and I can leave this bid open in a tab for a minute and go ahead and close these tagging windows. Um, and what you'll notice now is it says file one um, that there's a there's a file attached to this, so that if I did go ahead and email this purchase order, um, the attachment would be attached. But we're going to talk about doing that a little bit later. But I want to real quickly show you what the purchase order looks like with all of those items on it. And you would probably you would export this to PDF so that you can use your own PDF tools. But here's our um, purchase order with all of the items. We will go over a little more when we're printing about how you're going to select a PO style that you've set up. Um, you'll notice that if I export this to PDF, let me go ahead and do it real quickly that this style that we used was one that had a signature in it, but the initial HTML view won't um, display that so well, but your, uh, your PDF will. And like I said, your tools you can use to email that PO. Um, let's go ahead and say that we're adding some notes here. Um, 832.662 is their, their thing. And we'll just go ahead and put that in the notes. which is attached. And that will print on the PO, so we'll go ahead and save that. Now what I'd like you to notice is that we have an original budget amount, and if you watched our vendor bids um, videos, we actually added a 5% contingency to our budget amount over and above what their bid was, but our total, bid, our total POs are this, so that it's showing with the total POs that our estimated cost of completion is under right now. Um, which is good. We, that's just because of our 5% contingency. Um, notice that I could click the items if I decide for some reason I'm actually going to edit this amount um, and I need to click the items button it would have told me that but let's just say I uncheck for the semi-frame shower and now notice that my amount has changed to this. So then I would need to click, um, and like I said, these items features are discussed in items videos. But if I click to update my PO amount to that, it asks me if it's okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this and see if it does do that. It's reminding me to refresh my ECC data in case I made any changes. But notice that my amount is now 596.23. Um, and if I refresh my ECC, I'm even more under um, my original budget than I was. Let's uh, go back and put that back in before we forget. Let's go ahead and recheck mark this and go ahead and update that and then close that. So that's us creating from the budget screen, from the list of items. We checkmarked all of these and then we created a PO that had that list of items on it. Um, the next thing I'd like to go over is how you can create a purchase order from vendor bids. So notice that we had, um, let's go ahead and look for a vendor bid for $49.10. And I'd like you to watch the vendor bids videos for actually how you post vendor bids. Let's go here to 4910 for paint exterior. And let's click vendor bids to see if we have any postage yet. And like I said, um, adding new vendor bids, etc., is discussed in whole other videos and about how to set up videos and how, 
uh, bids and how to request bids. And we might have two or three bids here, but you can see that we've checkmarked, we selected this bid for the budget. But if there had been a PO issued based on this bid, the last PO, it would say yes here. So let's go ahead and create a PO from this vendor bid by clicking the plus PO button on that line. Notice that we have um, already have an attachment for the bid. And if you look back here at the bid, you'll see a little paperclip icon, which means that when we created that vendor bid, um, we uploaded a copy of their bid. We can, of course, always attach, view, and then since there's a bid here, we can click the magnifying glass, and we can open that file. So we have a copy of that bid. But I'd like you to notice on here is that this painter did for exterior of the house and interior of the house and two separate things. We are going to be issuing actually a PO batched by a PO title in some later videos um, to this vendor just because we want to give them one printout. But in this case for our demonstration in this video I just wanted to show you how quick it was to create a purchase order from a vendor bid. It notes that over here I could type some information about this is based on your bid uh, numbers, such and such. But that's how quickly um, we created um, a purchase order. You can see here's the purchase order. We did put a contingency when we um, accepted it for the budget also. So our purchase order is actually being a little lower than our budget amounts. But that's how quick, that's another place you can click to um, create a purchase order, and that's from vendor bids look at the help document and you'll see that we're going over that in the help document about how to create budgeted purchase orders. Now, the last way for budgeted purchase orders that I'd like to demonstrate is that if I close this budget worksheet and close this, if we go to the use the purchase orders button right here for um, budgets, we can create a new PO from scratch. And that means that we would be selecting the job, the vendor, the cost code, the cost type would drop in. But what I'd like to do is go ahead and stop this video because in my very next video I will create a purchase order from scratch and then in that video I'm going to go over all of the fields that are on the purchase order window and all of these fields and what this checkbox means here about using items or not using items. Um, and I just want to go over all the fields on the purchase order window so that you know what to do with all of them for a budgeted PO. So thank you for watching this and please continue on to our third video about creating budgeted uh, purchase orders.